Hi, I'm Heather Kraus, and welcome to the seven step data equity framework and how you can harness the power of this framework to improve the equity and ethics in your data journalism work. So there are seven steps uh, in this data life cycle, and that starts from funding and goes all the way through communication and distribution. So the first step is funding. So um, if you are using data of any sort in your data journalism product or story, you need to know who paid for the collection of that data. Um, for example, you can find really good research coming out of Goldman Sachs for how well they helped um, vulnerable young people get into college and stay into college. They have research on that. You will not find research that shows how many students were forced to drop out of college or forego it altogether due to the 2007-2008 economic crisis brought about in part by Goldman Sachs. Why does some of that data exist and some of that data not exist? That's because of funding. Goldman Sachs paid for one of those research studies, one of those data sets to exist, and did not fund one of those other research studies. Funding has a direct effect on what data exists and from the data that exists, what it actually says. Um, so if you're going to share um, data or statistics or research in your data journalism article, it's very important that you know who funded, who paid for that data to exist, because it's quite expensive to get data to exist. And somehow your audience needs to be able to find that information, whether it's through a footnote or a link, you need to make transparent. Who paid for this data that you're citing? Okay, number two is motivation. Motivation is why does the data that you're citing exist? Who decided that this data would exist and what purpose is it serving? Step three is project design. So the data that exists was collected by somebody who designed the way that it would be collected. So for example, all the funding and all the motivation um, that led to the data being um, created, somebody had to operationalize those ideas. Some people had to decide why and how that data set would come into existence. For example, is um, a report, a research report, and a, that turned into a data story that showed that risky behaviors were being reduced in certain communities. And the risky behaviors included um, smoking, drug abuse, and premarital sex. And in this case, uh, the media outlet had quite a problem because lumping smoking, drug abuse, and premarital sex into a category called risky behavior is um, a very um, value-based opinion. Whether or not premarital sex is the same as drug abuse, is the same as smoking, uh, is somebody's opinion. And so using data that came from this study in your data journalism story uh, embeds the project design's opinion of what is a risky behavior into your data story. So this is another example of how project design as step three is an important step to consider in your data journalism story. Phase four is data collection and sourcing. So if you're a data journalist, you know that finding the data that you need is incredibly hard. So you're going to have to get it from somewhere and you're going to have to decide whether or not you're gonna trust it. Step five is analysis. Sometimes as a data journalist, you're doing your own analysis. And sometimes as a data journalist, you're going to rely on other people's analysis. And analysis itself is not objective. So there's a big difference in saying there's no such thing as a fact 
and versus um, worldviews are embedded into data. And we as journalists need to understand how worldviews are embedded into data and make that transparent in our data journalism stories. So these are the uh, seven steps in the data journalism cycle. We've done funding, motivation, project design, data collection, and analysis. Then once you have your analysis, this is where you as a data journalist probably do most of your work in steps six and seven, which is interpretation and communication. That's primarily your job as a data journalist, the interpretation and communication. If you like this video, then we invite you to check out the full self-directed course by clicking on the link in the description. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you and see you next time.